Go with me to Ephesians chapter 2. If you're, if you're here visiting today, we're on number four of a series. And my, my prayer this week was, God, how do I tie this series into Thanksgiving Sunday? Because Thanksgiving is one of my favorite messages in the whole world. This, the principle of Thanksgiving changed our life. It changed the way that we related to God. It changed our faith. It, it, it just was such a revolutionary thought for me. And, uh, <clears throat> but God gave me some really neat things. I figured that he's pretty smart, you know. He can work things out. So, do you find Ephesians 2 yet? Show of hands. How many of you have a paper Bible? Let's put your hand up real quick. Okay. No school like the old school. How many of you have electronic Bibles? Okay. How many of you don't have a Bible? A few honest souls. How many of you know Jesus as Lord and Savior? Okay, things are moving up. This is good. I'm getting more response. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. This scripture recaps very well what we've been talking about for the last three weeks. And I'm going to highlight a couple of words here as we go through this. So, so you catch these words and then see if the Holy Spirit gives you what he was giving me before I get there. <clears throat> Ephesians 2, verse 1. And you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and we were by nature children of wrath, <clears throat> just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you've been saved. Raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus, for good works which God be prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. It's, it, it's an interesting little thing to do with what we've been learning about being in Christ. For those of you that, that weren't here in the other messages, what I talked about is when you, got, when you gave your heart to Jesus... Your spirit man died, the man that was separated from God, and God rebirthed your spirit, but he rebirthed you in Christ. So as though this pulpit was Christ, you didn't just get rebirthed in Craig, you got rebirthed in Christ. So now you'll see in Paul's epistles, the major revelation all the way through Paul's epistles is who you are in Christ. So it's funny, if you read something like this, you find that this term in Christ, in him, in whom, in the beloved, with Christ, comes up again and again. And what happens is it changes the way you read your New Testament. So if I read some of that without this, verse 5, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together. By grace you've been saved. Raised us up together. Made us sit together in heavenly places. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us. For by grace you've been saved. Did you notice that all of a sudden you start to see those words in Christ be, and, and he says it for a reason. He's continually trying to bring us back to everything you think and do and have comes from this posture right here. So, so you find that Paul just puts this in at the most inappropriate places. He just puts in, da -da 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 -da, in Christ. And you're like, what'd you put that in there for? Because he's trying to get us not to focus on just what was done, but where it was done for us. Okay? Now, these key words open up the revelation throughout the New Testament. And whenever you see the words in Christ, it's about to tell you something you have access to as part of your inheritance. Romans talks about this. It says that without a death, there's no inheritance. So the point was this, that Jesus, of course, had to die, and in dying, he created an inheritance. But that inheritance, he received from the Father that which he was supposed to receive. But the moment you get born again, the same inheritance that Jesus got, you get. So anytime you see in Christ, or with Christ, or through Christ, or in the beloved, it's telling you, okay, there's something in the inheritance that's waiting there. 
Wouldn't it be a terrible thing to find out that your Uncle Bob died and left you a million dollars in a bank account, but nobody ever told you that there was a million dollars in the bank account? Because all of a sudden, you realize later on in life, somebody says, well, what, the, 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 the people never contacted you? You've had a million dollars sitting in your bank account for the last 20 years, and it's accrued interest all that time. And you think back over your life of, oh my goodness, when the times was that I could have used that, I could, that could have helped me. That's the way it is in my experience with many Christians. We have this massive inheritance in Christ. You guys, we don't just get born again and hang on till we get to heaven. Dear God, what a life that would be. We get born again and we get turned into world changers. We get turned into people who can pray heaven and earth together. We get turned into people who can cast out devils. We have a healing rooms thing here. Why? Because we pray for people and they get well. What, what is that? That's the supernatural that we've been given in Christ. A brand new way of living. Hosea 4, 6 says something interesting. It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Meaning what? If I don't know what I've been given, how will I ever access it? Think about this. You can't have faith for what you don't know. 